Thank you. Some of you are familiar with my writing through the Wise Economy Workshop and, and a recent book called The Local Economy Revolution. And in that, if you're familiar with those, you know that I've kind of made a pain of myself of complaining about the way that we have handled things like incentives, things like marketing, some of the things that we've done that I think are a little on the simplistic side. And what I have been struggling with over the last couple of years is why? Why is that such a challenge to us? So what we're going to talk about today is kind of a current working theory on maybe why we find it so hard to shift to new ideas. Go ahead. And that's what that says too. So I'm going to start by talking about the fact that um, I actually stole this idea. And in a second you're going to see a picture of my very good friend, uh, Bill Lutz. Now Bill, there's Bill being switched by his wife, that is his wife. Um, <laughs> I could get him in big trouble. Bill is the Community Development Director for City of Piqua, Ohio. And Bill has written for the Wise Economy Workshop a bunch of times and actually wrote a piece called Economic Development as Junk Food. So here's the question. Why do we have such a hard time giving up things that we know don't really work very well for us? It's kind of like our addiction to junk food. Part of the reason why we like junk food is because it's easy. I mean, that thing had handles on it, and in addition to having handles, it tastes good. I mean, we have to admit that. The big old greasy burger, there's something in the fat and the salt that just makes us happy. And it's kind of like when we get a good, good big deal. We may know that it might not all be that good for us. It might be something that might make us a little fat, a little lazy, we probably shouldn't be doing it for the long term, but it tastes good, it's enjoyable, and a lot of times we do it anyways. I mean, we could probably blame the cavemen, right? Because if they hadn't been spending all their time, you know, trying not to starve, then they, they you know, probably would have learned to eat appropriately sophisticated, locally grown produce and, uh, and, and think a little more sophisticatedly. The junk food issue makes it, it, it's easy and it looks happy. I mean, you got clowns, you got happy meals, you got smiling children, you have businesses that are happy, you have mayors that are happy. And frankly, we have been doing it for a long time, the stuff lasts. So who's to say that, you know, we can't keep doing it? It, it hasn't killed us yet, has it? Uh, plus it stays forever. <laughs> now, we know that in our heads, in you know, what we've read, and what our doctor told us, that we should be eating a wide variety of foods that are healthy. We know that our communities need a wide variety of resources, that they're complex. <coughs> but the problem we face a lot of times is that complex things don't always do what we want them to do. Things wilt, <coughs> the weather goes bad, and even when they don't, you have to do kind of yucky stuff. I'm not a worm fan myself, for sure. The challenge we face is that when we allow those kinds of very simple, um, very reflexive responses to, to drive what we do, then we kind of become like everybody else. We lose what makes us unique, and people are onto that anymore. Whether it's businesses or whether it's people in their communities, People know that if, if there's nothing special about the place, it's just like anywhere else. And once you're like just, and just like anywhere else, and you've lost the ability to share what's truly unique about you, you're descending down the food chain. <coughs> you're becoming the economic bottom of the barrel. So what I usually tell communities when I work with them is you have to capitalize on what it is that makes you unique. You don't necessarily have to be the healthiest thing on the planet, but you do have to be who you are and take care of who you are. Take care of your uniqueness. Now, you know, one thing that, you know, I, this might not be everybody's cup of tea, right? This doesn't look like the lunch you want today. Your community might not be the thing for everybody, but it is, an it is what you have uniquely to offer, and the people who value that are the people who will find it worth, worth valuing. So we don't have to eat a pound of spinach every day, and we don't have to become completely perfect and completely complex and appropriately sophisticated overnight. But what we do need to do is start selecting an appropriate array, an appropriate selection of options for our communities. 
It's not a one-shot solution. There are multiple things that we need to be doing in integrating with the other professionals that work in this field. I think we all sort of know that stuff. It's hard. It doesn't come easily. There's resistance. But we gotta get started. I started running a couple of years ago, and as you can probably guess, I am not fast. I am not a far runner. I, this pretty much sums up my running existence. But when I get frustrated, and when I, my leg hurts, what people remind me is it's better to have made a little bit of a start than not at all. So I might as well get started. So thank you. Yeah.